this is the sixth video of the series learning and we are going to discuss reinforcement and schedules of reinforcement in detail and shaping. I just remind you in video 4 uh, we discussed the initial say ideas about reinforcement and we said that uh, shaping will be discussed later. It was a little video I saw you and you have watched where the person was teaching the little parrot to put the ball in the basket. Reinforcing constantly ball in the basket. Put the ball in the basket. I hope you have watched. Okay, let's start again. I hope this time my lower voice won't be so um, intruding to your ears. So, the operon conditioning is an operation we train by reward, by reinforcement. What we need to remember is it's important to know at which stage of behavior modification we are. In the beginning of acquiring a new behavior, we need to use continuous reinforcement. Continuous reinforcement because we need to show how imperative and important is to keep this behavior. So continuous reinforcement said explained by the word means that I have to continuously reinforce, continuously reward. So every correct response has to be reinforced. I remind you the video with Michelle Pfeiffer, the teacher in the college community. She was giving the chocolates the tent is every correct response. Even the class clown stood up and laughed. Okay? Because he got the correct answer, because he explained his learning, he got the reward. Have that in mind. Continuous reinforcement equals every correct response is reinforced. Now, as we go further, as we go further, we move to partial reinforcement, which means that I'm not reinforcing, I'm not uh, rewarding every time. I reward some, but not all the correct responses. Okay? And uh, this keeps the person up a bit. It keeps it constantly trying because it will be rewarded unexpectedly. He does know if he will be rewarded every time. And this is the problem. This blue bubble correlates with the continuous reinforcement and the red with the partial reinforcement. The continuous reinforcement is great, excellent, when we need to establish a new behavior. The learning is faster. The, the rate of response is high. Everybody is responding correct. But it is less resistant to extinction. Think about it. We're going to discuss it in the class. Less resistant to extinction means extincts or not extincts? We'll discuss it in the class. Partial reinforcement means that not everything will be rewarded. So it not becomes a habit. It does not become a habit. It is there. I reward, but not every time. I reward when I judge to. And this behavior is 
of this schedule of red phosphor is more resistant to extinction. This behavior is not extinct as or as easy. Now, now we have moved to the partial reinforcement. I want to remind you, partial reinforcement is when the good behavior has been established. Okay. Now, I have two different kinds of reinforcements. Remember, reinforcement is the positive. Reinforcement is the one that strengthens their behavior, the one that rewards the good behavior. So, I can have the ratio schedule of reinforcement, which means I make a response and after a number of specific good responses, then I'm going to be rewarded. So, every five correct responses, I'm giving you a star. Every five correct answers, I'm giving you a name. Every five days work, I'm giving you a paycheck. Interval schedule of reinforcement is time-based not number of times of a specific behavior, but every certain time. So, every certain period, like every month, every year. It needs a period. Now, I want to discuss in the class this thing. You go to your work, and you get paid. Is that a ratio schedule of reinforcement of specific behavior or an interval ratio? Uh, an interval schedule of reinforcement. Let's take it further. I want you to understand the definitions and the difference in the response rates and have example for each one of you and each one of the cases. I really don't care if all of you learn these examples. Why? Because in psychology, in the exams, you are going to be placed in order according to your says number. So, let's say 63, 701, 63, 702, 63, 703. If these three students, regardless if they come from Cupipiti, Mount Gambia, or Glenalba, have chosen psychology, they will be placed one after the other. So, if I check your um, numbers, I bet you nobody will be in the same batch with the other. Everybody will be in different batches. So, every marker gets some batches. If I see this answer and this answer by you, it's okay. They won't be able to understand that you're coming from the same class. So, please learn this to make sure that you have learned the right example. So, let's discuss this ratio schedule of reinforcement. Ratio means how many responses are correct. Okay? So I can have either fixed ratio or variable ratio. What means fixed ratio? It means that the reward, the reinforcement, will come after a fixed number of responses. Every third, every fourth, every fifth. You get to know, you get to understand the pattern. What the positives and the negatives with this? Because they can ask you, give an example of fixed ratio, and mention a positive and a negative. The positives. Produces a high rate of responding. Great for the initial stages of behavior modification. However, respondents of pause briefly after its reinforcement to try. 
responders often stop trying immediately after the reinforcement. Imagine that your dad pays you $10 if you wash mom's and dad's car. So, immediately, everybody will say, yeah, hey, I'll do it for $10. And then he gets into the idea of washing two cars. How many hours? So, after this first initial high rate of response, the child thinks, oh, I need again to spend all these hours and wash these two cars to get another $10. Mm -hmm. So, often, pauses the interest and the nice behavior after each reinforcement. So, you have to order again when the money are gone, you have to ask the child again. Yeah. Now, let's discuss the variable rate of reinforcement. Variable ratio of schedule of reinforcement. First things first. Variable means unpredictable. Variable means person who is reinforced doesn't know when the reward will come. Okay? Because the number and the amount of responses varies. I need this to be answered. Please try to answer this in your mind. The reinforcee doesn't know. Does the reinforcer know? I'm trying to modify my child's behavior. And unpredictable this behavior is for the child. But I'm going to give the rewards. Do I have a pattern? Theoretically, I do. But I shouldn't. Because if my child is clever, we'll get the pattern. So if I go over first, third, fifth, seventh, he will get it, or she will get it. So really, the idea is that the reinforcee and the reinforcer should keep the variable ratio of schedule in order to have that working. So computerized, random selection of the reward time, that would be perfect. I want you to remember that, because this is the way the pokies are working. Not even those who have all the machines, they don't know when the reward will come. Now, what happens with this? What's the positive and what's the negative? The positive is there is high response, and there is no pause, as it was here. And it is very resistant to extinction. So it doesn't stop, it doesn't exist. We are hooked. Do you see any negative? Hmm. No negatives. Remember that. The example, the best example I want you to remember to the variable ratio of reinforcement schedule is the pocket machines. They don't pay after first, second, third time. They don't know when they pay. They pay after an average number of responses, but could be the first, the seventh, the twentieth. We'll have an example later, where somebody is paid on the eighth time he puts money, and then the fifth time, and then the fortieth time. Okay, on average, if you go forty and ten and eight, on average, he's getting paid every 25, but he doesn't know. This is exactly the example here. The variable ratio reinforcement hooks these people. That's why it becomes addictive. It's maintained by the variable ratio of reinforcement schedule. Remember Skinner? 
I pay I made you alert on that comment in the video of him talking. They found that the variable ratio of reinforcement is the one that works the best in the pigeons and the rats in the humans. So this is the example I mentioned before and I'm going to explain here. On average, let's say it's after uh, 20 presses and uh, they get some money payout. Eight presses means eight times money are there, eight coins. So let's do the math. It's eight coins, eight presses, gets ten payout plus two. After five more attempts, he gets twenty coins payout. So he has put in there thirteen coins. He gained thirty. He's on the positive seventeen coins. But then he presses for forty more presses, and nothing happens. Is he on positive or negative? He has lost these seventeen dollars coins he has gained. He has spent more, just hoping that this ding 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 will be heard. So he thinks every time that the next attempt will be the one that pays. And again and again and again finish the machine money. So, let's revise, let's have it in the mind. The variable ratio of reinforcement is best for maintaining a behavior. The fixed ratio of reinforcement is the best to learn a new behavior. And if I am very devious, this fixed in the beginning, it will be continuous, not partial. So, if we want to take it further, we start from a continuous ratio of reinforcement and then I move it to partial ratio of reinforcement, but fixed. Let's discuss now the next one, the interval schedule of reinforcement. Again, here we have a fixed interval and the variable interval. What is the meaning of fixed interval? It means that the reinforcement occurs after a fixed time. Okay, so after 10 minutes, after 20 minutes. What's the positive? The response tend to increase as the time for the next reinforcer is near, but drops after the reinforcement and during the interval. So, fixed interval could be every week, every seven days. Okay, remember that every seven days. What means this? The response tend to increase at the time of the next week 10, the next seventh day. As the seventh day approaches, the response tends to increase, but drops immediately after that. Imagine that the fixed interval of reinforcement is your weekly paycheck. Okay. So what happens there? Can you remember the feeling? Can you remember how excited you are when it's payday? And then you wait for the next payday. The variable interval means that the reinforcement occurs unpredictably. The time varies, so you don't know when. Example, I'm testing for alcohol, I'm testing my workers for using of drugs. You don't know, you shouldn't know when 
uh, the check out of this behavior. Blah, 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 blah. What's the positives and what's the negatives of this? Relatively, there is a low response rate. Okay? The response rate is low. That's a negative. But it's steady because the subject cannot predict if the reward will come or not come. So that's why they work at a steady level. Okay? Example is here. The speed test, the alcohol test, the random drug test for athletes. This is variable interval. The same athlete is not having every Um, day test, but can have every day test. Yes? So it's not controlled, it's unpredictable. So because they don't know when they will be tested, that's why they have to be clean. Having said that, Lance was checked constantly and he was constantly on drugs. Now, this um, graph is for you to understand better the fixed ratio and the variable ratio of reinforcement. It's a little bit different between the previous one. We're going to discuss it. And I have a reason because it is like this. You can read all this. I'll try to explain what I want you to remember. This is your duty to read. This is my duty to explain. Talking about the ratio, I want you to pay attention that this ratio is fixed. This note is every time I'm rewarding. Okay? So what happens? I have a high cumulative response. Okay? But it has lower resistance to extinction. Why? because this person has habituated to get the reward. If I don't give the reward, if I miss a reward here, now if you miss a reward there, you'll say, oh, you're not giving your word. I'm not working anymore for you. Okay? But if you keep on doing that all the time, they will keep up. This is how we shape the behavior of the animals. In, have you gone to SeaWorld? The dolphin gets the fish every time he jumps. Every time. Poor hungry dolphin. My dear. So in this case, in the variable ratio of reinforcement, we have one, two. And then if you see this time, it's almost one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Almost after seven times he's rewarded. And then after three times. So it's really unpredictable. This is high, has a higher resistance to extinction because uh, this behavior is not rewarded every time. The person, the reinforcee, doesn't know if you will be rewarded here, here, here. I keep doing that, hoping the next time he will be rewarded. Pockies. But the book is a brilliant because it is here and there. Okay, it's variable into the time and the times. In the fixed interval, you see, every 10 minutes, yeah? And the rewards there, fixed interval. But it stops, pauses, falls down, it's not straight, yes? then the peak falls down soon after the reward. Do you see a straight line, straight line, straight line? The effort is continued. The effort is continued. Here, they get the reward, it falls down. They pick it up when the next five minutes are coming. And the effort goes down. And they pick up. Can I give you an example? term grades 
picking up, picking up, picking up, submitting all the work for term grades. Then fall down, fall down, fall down, fall down. Lowest mid term. And then up again. The question next term. When points are coming. Whereas here, you see, it's constantly the same level of behavior. Steady. No pauses. Because it is variable. Could be here, could be there, 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 there. No. It takes long and now it's very often. And now they anticipate that it will be here. No. Again. Could be one, two, three here next to each other. And then long time without it. So Pocky is doing exactly this. They have variable ratio and variable interval. Remember the example I gave you earlier with the Pocky machines with the picture? He had eight presses, ten dollars, and then five presses, twenty dollars. So he doesn't know how much money they will come, okay, and how often they will come. He doesn't know the ratio and how often. Brilliant. Use of psychology in everyday life. So, let's conclude this about the schedules of reinforcement. Fixed ratio, variable ratio. Fixed ratio, high rates of responding. Okay. The variable ratio, it's even better. Okay, and we use them when we want the behavior to happen often. I want you to study every day for maths and psychology. I'm rewarding you every day. Talking about the intervals, the fixed interval schedules. For, do you see a clustering of response around the reward time? Remember the example, report time. Everybody works, works, works. You put all these endless, sleepless nights to finish the work as soon as possible. Okay? The schedule is used when we want the behavior to occur at a specified time, but not constantly. Exams. Remember exams. How you will study towards the end of the year 12 more than in the beginning. But that's not correct. Having said that, variable interval schedule produces low but constant rates of responding. Okay? It's used when we want this behavior to occur in an ongoing basis. Okay? So I want you to constantly the same behavior, but not so often. So I'm doing this. I'm using this schedule of reinforcement. I need to go to the next and something has gone terribly wrong with my Prezi hmm. I'm sorry about this I think I have to stop it I don't know where I was I'm sorry I don't know what happened to my Prezi when I'm talking for long the Prezi is going So we are in the schedule of reinforcements, we were there, and then concluding the schedules of reinforcements, we were here. Now it comes. So, we are going to the next level, if I have enough time. And the next level is... I have to stop somehow there. I need to discuss the extinction in the operant conditioning. Remember what uh, we have discussed uh, for the extinction in the classical conditioning? When the stimulus and the response are not paired for some time, we lose the connection. Okay, and that's extinction in classical conditioning, stimulus extinction. In operant conditioning, there is extinction, 
but it has to be connected with a reward. So, if the reinforcement is delivered in a predictable manner, extinction will occur more rapidly. This is why we said the fixed ratio every day, the continuous fixed ratio of rewards becomes not as rewarding eventually. I need you to know an example here. You can make your own example or you can use mine. I have a daughter, as all you know, and I'm giving her all the time presents for good behavior, for Christmas, for Easter, for New Year's Day, for no reason, because she brought uh, good marks, because she was a good girl, because she was the disease, and buying her constantly games. So, for her, the reinforcement that's delivered constantly, it's not connected as a cause and effect of good behavior. I'm not modifying any behavior. What I'm teaching actually her is the learning is happening is that she is going to be rewarded regardless if she's good, bad, brings good marks, not good marks, Christmas, you understand that? So the extinction occurs rapidly. She thinks that the present is a fight, not a reward. So I want you to remember that, and remember that extinction occurs more rapidly following the fixed ratio training than the variable ratio training. Fixed. Every week, she gets a present. Every five answers, she gets a present. At the end, you believe that it is your right. No, it's not. That's why we said before that the variable ratio of schedule reinforcement of training is resisting extinction. Extinction similarly occurs more rapidly, so the connection extincts. If I have a fixed interval training, then following a variable interval training. So, if I want to make it connection, the F is very close to E, the fixed ratio and the fixed interval are easier to extinct. So, remember this, easier to extinguish responding, that has been conditioned via continuous schedules and partial schedules. Yes? The continuous schedules is my daughter's example. Yes, she feels that it is her right. As in classical condition we discussed about extinction and discrimination of stimuli, we have to discuss the same here. Distinction and extinction, sorry, and discrimination or distinction in operant condition applies. Uh, in uh, the discrimination of the stimuli in classical conditioning, we had the bell, the ring of my phone against the ring of another phone. Here, uh, it's the behavior that really uh, is discriminating. The open sign tells me to go into the shop. And the close sign tells me not to go to the shop. So open, I walk and go in, I do something. Closed, I go to the next shop that's open. Just to remind and clarify this, in the discrimination of the phone, I'm separating, I'm discriminating the stimulus, the sound of my phone, okay? If I pick it up or not, it's another issue. It's not classical conditioning if I'll pick up my phone. 
classical conditioning, stimulus discrimination in classical conditioning, is that I do discriminate between Maria's and my phone. In operant conditioning, discrimination would be my phone picking up the sound from my mother and not picking up the sound when my boss is calling me. Remember for the people who have different sounds in their phones regarding who is coming from the call? So this is a good example if you want to remember. The colored lights also, the red and the green, are important. Okay, red, go. Uh oh, I got you. Red, stop, green, go. It is a reinforcement of a set behavior. Okay, and they have trained us following this behavior. They have trained us to go and um, be safe in our work don't hit each other. So this is a small exercise I want us to do in the class and I want these responses and I put it there because you can remember it and uh, I want you to practice. I will place a question in the forums and I want you answer here to see how you describe that and how you're going to respond to it. Fixed pressure why is it fixed? Because he gets paid every flux he makes. Why variable? Looks like a book. Mm, yes, you know the answer. That's the fixed interval. What's the fixed interval? Every 1700 hour it goes away from her office back home. That's a fixed interval. Does she know that the wave will come every 1700 hour? No. That's why he's waiting. We'll practice on this and I want you to uh, discuss this with regards to um, the schedule of reinforcement, discrimination, extinction and the rest. And this is how we are shaping a behavior. I need you to remember, remember the birdie, the part who was putting the ball in the basket. Shaping means reinforcing a series of successive steps and when the item, the participant reaches the final goal, then we know that it has been shaped. So shaping requires continuous reinforcement uh, we shape the behavior of the dolphin in the sea world. It is effective for teaching complex or new behaviors, okay, that are not likely to occur by nature. So this is by nature. So this is why I'm using this to shape the behavior of a dolphin. The next example is shaping and you can call it shaping or um, the sensitization. We're going to discriminate between these two. Uh, an animal or a person is systematically reinforced for displaying closer and closer approximations of desired responses. Approximation of desired response. This is shaping. The animal systematically reinforced to show approximation of desired response, jump over the hook, the lion to jump through the ring of fire. Uh, the horse to gallop. Every time they gallop, they get their sugar. The method of successive approximations, me, sorry, the method of successive approximations shapes a desired behavior. How? By reinforcing and strengthening each small step towards the target behavior. 
I hope you understand the meaning of this. This method of approximated behaviors gives a shape to the desired behavior. The people know how the others want them to behave. Imagine a model who learns to walk the catwalk. Successive approximations of the desired walk. Okay? It is shaping and they're reinforced and strengthening every small step. How they're reinforced? With good words. How they strengthen their behavior? By reward. Getting the job because they have learned the catwalk. So how we do that? You start by reinforcing the tendency in the right direction. And then you gradually require responses that are more and more and more closer to the target behavior. Initially, I'm reinforcing my math students if they are happy to solve some maths. And then I'm shaping and I'm asking them every time to do more and more and more maths. This is example, shaping. Or, as we call it later, systematic desensitization. How we do that? Let's say how to treat the fear for tarantulas. We start small. You start imagining one. And then you think, how would I feel if I was in the room with this? And eventually you go and you touch one. And now you're not scared anymore. This is shaping. Systematic desensitization of the heights. Remember how we do that? Start small. Go up a stair or two. Look down. You're not afraid. Walk up higher. Talking with others. Getting your mind away from that. And then you look down and you're not scared. Eventually, you walk over the bridge of Sydney. Okay, so um, what's the best way to promote fast learning and high resistance to extinction? Mm -hmm. Yes. I need to begin the reinforcing of the desired behavior on a continuous sorry, schedule until the behavior is well established. And then I have to sift to a partial, preferably variable schedule, but it is gradually more demanding towards the right behavior. This is the correct answer. I want you to learn off by heart and have it in your mind if they ask you questions like this. Now, in operant conditioning, we have extinction, we have discrimination, and we have generalization. Let's discuss this. Extinction, we said a lot of examples, but we have to say that in another way for other people to understand it. Simple words, I decide to no more use a specific behavior. I decide to voluntarily to make it extinct because the previously reinforced behavior doesn't pay me off anymore. So if I don't get my chocolate, I don't study my maths. Discrimination. The upper conditioning. We know that red means stop. Yellow bus means take 
taking home. Train means I have to walk more. Okay? Buses, blue, buses, yellow, buses, orange. Yellow cab, orange cab. Silver cab. This is a discrimination. Okay? So we learn to behave according to what we want to do. And last but not least, let me move this. Generalization is when we uh, learn from specific behavior to do specific things for everyone. So uh, I'm young, I'm uh, touching the stove, I'm burned, I'm not touching any burners anymore. Okay? Uh, I'm going to let you watch the movie. Truman Show, and we're going to discuss why Truman doesn't go close to the sea. This is something we'll discuss in the class. Okay? Behavior generalized because of specific things, specific issues. And I think uh, this is where we have to stop because I'm not sure if I have more time. Uh, yeah, we are moving to the application. So next video will be on applications. And uh, that will be 6A. And the other one will be 6B. Thank you. This is too big. <laughs>